Can you follow my finger here with your eyes? It was early one morning during breakfast that Alfreda Aguilera Cordero experienced a headache like never before. All of a sudden, I put my hand to my brain and I said, I have never had headaches. What is this? Because it was here. It was terrible. Minutes later, she was rushed to the emergency room. Soon after, she was told she had not one, but two aneurysms at the base of her brain. A brain aneurysm resembles a bubble on a blood vessel. In Cordero's case, one of the two aneurysms had burst. After the aneurysm bursts, it stops bleeding, but it has a, it has a hole in it. Just like if you cut your skin, you have a little scab. That scab is not strong enough to prevent it from breaking again. Which, according to the University of North Carolina Hospital's neurosurgeon Anand Germanwala, if left untreated, could have been deadly for Cordero. She was faced with two tough choices. One, a method which stakes a catheter through the groin and up into the brain in order to fill the aneurysms with platinum coils, or to opt for a traditional surgical clipping. Two procedures, two very different approaches. But Dr. Germanwala presented Cordero with yet a third option, one that had never been tried before. He gave me two options for the surgery. He asked me which one I wanted to have, if I decided for the incision in my head or through the nose. At that time, I thought it was a lot more risky an incision in your head. And through the nose, I thought that there wasn't going to be any big incision. I kept thinking about my children. I kept asking, God help me. Cordero opted for the newer treatment, an endoscopic endonasal approach for clipping brain aneurysms, a procedure that requires surgeons to enter through the nose and into the nasal passage in order to access the base of the brain. During traditional surgical clipping, surgeons cut through and remove the top portion of the skull and lift the brain to reach aneurysms sometimes to get to very difficult areas of the brain that are at the base, what we refer to as the skull base, we have the brain in the way. And if we approach these things from above, we have to move the brain aside. The brain doesn't like that. I told her that uh, although this has never been done, to my knowledge, in the world before on a ruptured aneurysm, that um, we might be able to access these two aneurysms completely by just going through her nose. And I talked to her, and I told her that I've never done this before, um, but she had tremendous trust, tremendous faith that we would do what's best. And I asked him, please take good care of me, save me, because all I could think of was my children. We got great visualization of the aneurysms. I put a clip on one aneurysm, I put a clip on another aneurysm, and then we shot an arteriogram in the operating room that showed the clips were on uh, the aneurysms that the aneurysms were obliterated, and then we repaired the opening with the nasoceptal flap. Now nearly five months since the surgery, Dr. Germanwala is pleased with Cordero's progress. I thank the doctor and I thank God that I'm alive. I'm alive and I'm well. It was so difficult. I didn't think that I was going to make it. Cordero still marvels at being the first patient to go through this type of procedure. She knows that in years to come, she may be the catalyst for change in how neurosurgeons treat brain aneurysm. Yes, he has told me that it was a success and I was the first person, the first patient. That makes me feel even more thankful because I was the first time. But most of all, because he saved my life. I'm Stephanie Creighton, reporting.